Daily Devotion Read, Luke 10 25-29 and 36-37 Being a Neighbor By Jennifer A. Soon I am always amused at the setup of condo units nowadays. You live in a unit, on a floor with at least five other neighbors, yet often you don't get to see who these people are. Everyone is up and about, busy with family, work, among other things, that the word neighbor has been reduced to mean simply living next door. No emotional attachment whatsoever is evoked by this word. I remember growing up living in room 304 of an old building near Ongpen. Though I never actually spent much time playing with other kids in the neighborhood, I could still vividly recall them peeking through our steel gate, calling my name. Their laughter was often heard along the hallway too. Now that we are all grown up, with our own families, we still get to message each other from time to time. Our passage today talks about this beautiful concept of being a neighbor. The passage begins with a lawyer out to test Jesus, asking what he needs to do to gain eternal life. Jesus answers by asking him a question, and following it up with a command, the next step, to live it out. It is interesting to note that the lawyer seemed to not know who his neighbor was. But what caught my attention even further was that according to some scholars, the Jewish teachings divided the people into two subgroups. Neighbors and enemies. Jesus went on to tell him the parable of the Good Samaritan. After Jesus had finished speaking, the lawyer knew who was being a neighbor, yet could not get himself to say the word Samaritan. It is interesting that a neighbor could be someone whom others consider our enemy, or someone with an immediate need in front of us. Jesus ends with go and do likewise. This parable ends with a call to action for all of us, to help innocent persons who may be suffering, and to be concerned for the needs that are presented before us. As we look at the lawyer's question, we see more and more that we may never be like the Good Samaritan. How then can we inherit eternal life? Are we then left hopeless and helpless? No. Praise be to God, for eternal life can never be inherited by doing. God's grace is the key to eternal life, and loving others and being a neighbor is the fruit. Reflection There are two kinds of Christians, the Good Samaritan and the overly concerned neighbor. Sometimes, in our desire to be of help to people, we go all out and fail to realize that we are not God. The Good Samaritan attended to the need in front of him, but did not go building a hospital, in the hopes of saving everyone in need. This gets us thinking, if only every believer will be a neighbor to the one near them, the difference it will make will be more than enough. What hinders you from loving your neighbor? Prayer Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace that assures us of eternal life. Lord, we pray that this grace will abound in us, that we may overflow with your love and be a neighbor to the people around us. Amen.